Previously on the bill. David Ratchford, I'm arresting you for attempted murder. Tony, where's Irene? He's here a minute ago. Okay? Irene Radford. Do you think she wants revenge? Maybe. But whatever it is, we're gonna have to stop her. From 158. Go ahead. Can you confirm exactly when the suspect was seen leaving Iron Radford's house? Someone's forced it. Let's take a look around. The suspect was seen by a neighbour, Mr. Earnshaw, entering the grounds to the property at approximately 9:05 a.m. Nice house. What are you doing? Seeing how much it's on the market for. You what? Just out of interest. Bet it's over a million. On the back. Oh, hi, I'm inquiring about a property you've got for sale. Amber, come on! Mm hmm. Uh huh. All right, right, two and a half million. Okay, thanks, I'll be in touch. Amber. Ugh, it's a dog. Is it dead? Well, unless it's got breathing apparatus down there, I think that's a pretty safe bet. What do you think you're doing? Oh, my God. The boys got me the dog for my 40th birthday. I'm sorry. I don't understand it. I don't know you're back. I spoke to the neighbours. They said they'd seen somebody hanging around here in the last few days. It wasn't much of a description, though. White, medium build, dark clothes. Ring any bells? How long have you been back? A few days. Why don't you come to the station? Why would I do that? Well, your son is on remand for shooting DC Thatcher. He was pointing a gun at me at the time. I don't recall committing any crime myself. DC Thatcher believes that you killed his father, and he's not the only one. Why haven't I been charged? Thatcher came at me with a gun, David grabbed hold of him and it went off. Self-defence. Oh, self-defence? Is that why you did a runner? I was frightened for my safety. Or is it because you knew you were not too far off being charged on two counts of murder? Got evidence to back that up. So, I went on holiday for a while. What would you have done in my shoes? Hang around waiting for Thatcher to show up again. Oh, this has got nothing to do with Rob Thatcher. If he was here, it wouldn't be a dog lying at the bottom of the pool. Seems as though you're taking a big risk coming back, Mrs. Radford. This is my home. There must be something else worth taking the risk. Lots of people want you out of action. Including you? Yeah. Well, looks like you'll get your wish. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? I'm back because I... I'm not well. Irene Radford's got cancer. Oh, what is it? Well, according to her, it's terminal, but the doctors are managing it. And then someone goes and kills your dog, eh? Life's a bitch, isn't it? Well, no pun intended, though. I want to know what she's up to. You know, now that she's back, she's creating more problems for us. Jack on? Yeah, with Irene back on the scene, we've potentially got two crime families going head to head. All right. Jack Gaunt reckons Irene killed his nephew. Oh, so you reckon he's out for revenge? Exactly. And if he can implicate Irene with the Brian Thatcher murder... Well, then she's going to want him dead too. Yeah. The question is, who will get to who first? All right, it's scum on scum. We should just let them blow each other's heads off. Oh, what a good idea, Philip. The DCI wants this situation monitored and contained, and that's the best we can do. What does that mean? I'm snowed under. It's a priority. Yes, Mr. Hunter. It's pink. Pink? 
Look, I ordered this over two weeks ago. The best you could do is deliver it on time. So you do that. Right, dear Santa, now that you've finished your Christmas shopping, I would like you to get down to Longmarsh Prison. Irene is visiting David today, and I want to know what the little chat is about. What do you reckon she's going to go and tell David how she's going to take out Jack Gaunt? If something is going down, I want to know what, when, and where. Is that clear? Thank you very much. Jack Gaunt is not going to kill a dog. Well, someone did. Rob Thatcher. Of course not. How can you be so sure? I've worked with him, I know him. And Jack Gaunt? Well, he's not a man to do things by half either. He was massively betrayed by the Radfords and then they kill his nephew. Listen, forget the dog. Jack Gaunt wants to put a bullet in the back of Ireland's skull. So what happened to the dog? I don't know, the silly thing probably just fell in the pool and drowned. Oh, the concrete dog colour, though. <laughs> yeah, this is all about, isn't it? No. A grudge match between Irene Radford and Gina Gold that's been going on for decades. Gold's obsessed by banging that woman up. Really? Mm. She would have seen the superintendent, chewed his ear off about Irene being back in town. You know, there's blood going to be kicking off all over the place, the streets are going to go mad, blah, blah, blah. And then we're seconded into some special unit of genius. It's like being in a foreign legion. Wait. You're supposed to be in Longmarsh. You've got ten minutes. Yeah, I was on my way there, man. If I sense that you're not taking this seriously, you will be wearing your desert boots. And I mean it. But you're right. I do want to get Irene Radford. You let me down, and your life won't be worth living. All right, I'll forget. I'm trying to tell you. Spectre Gold. Are you there yet? Yes, I've just got to the prison now. I didn't run for a ride a couple of minutes to go to see David. And you do know what you're doing? Yeah, look, I've spoken to the prison liaison officer. We've arranged for a live video feed to be sorted. Great. But this is not going to take all day, right? Gina, you're breaking up. I'll have to call you back later. Straight When was David Radford put in the segregation unit? A week ago. He looks terrible. What's the matter with him? He's lost the plot. He started lashing out at other prisoners. In the end, they sedated him. Well, it's all a bit useless if we can't hear what they're saying. Well, shut up for a second. I'm trying to concentrate. Yeah, on what? Lip reading. We had to learn it as part of the job. I am a woman of many talents. Well, you don't have to tell me that, darling. Those were the days, eh? Irene keeps telling him she's sorry over and over. Do you remember East Ham? You and me on surveillance. Don't. It makes me cringe just thinking about it. It's fun, though, isn't it? Well, it might have been a bit of fun for you. I thought... As a matter. David's trying to say something. He hasn't said a word about the whole thing. He's so doped up, I can't make out what he's saying. Irene's telling him that it's going to be all right. Well, we don't have to watch all this live, you know. We can review it all when it's all down on tape. Why have you got to be somewhere else? No. no I was just thinking... Yeah. What? Oh, well, we could have made a go of it. What, you, you want to go out? <laughs> no. I was thinking more a replay of East Ham. There's no CCTV in here, is there? We can't. There's no way. Really? Um, I'll be around for leaves of prison. Follow her, see where she goes, if she's with anyone, and if you need me, I'll be on my mobile, all right? On Gary. Be subtle. Gary, do you miss me? Oh, yeah. Oh, look, I'll catch you later, yeah? Mom. Family. The course. I was just wondering when I'd be able to put it into action. You what? I've just done the family liaisons officer's course and it has really inspired me. I just feel full of enthusiasm again. I had no idea that you'd lost your enthusiasm. No, I didn't mean that. Uh, Ali, can we have this conversation another time? Yeah, Mom, I just need no, time. No, please, 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 please. Not now. Okay, go on. What's this, a social visit? No, I'm back working. All done. So what's all this about the Radfords versus the Gaunts, then? I am just going to Jack Gaunt's house now. Do you want to come? Mm. Can we be on the way? Sure. Brilliant. 
I've got a couple of tickets to a gig in Camden on Friday. I don't know if you fancy it. A gig? Yeah. What, in some sweaty boozer? Yeah. No, I think we're both a little bit too old for that, don't you? Oh, well, maybe dinner then. Are you going to do a transcript of this? Of course. Well, come on then. Oh, look at you. <laughs> look, just tell me what Irene's saying when she leans in close to David there. Oh, come on, Cheryl. I've got an obsessive duty officer on my case, all right? I've got to report back with this. Well, she mentioned someone called Carl. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, that's her other son. Carl is going to... Oh. What? What's happening? Don't tell me the tape's run out. Must have done. Great. You know, she's going to absolutely crucify me now. have to make the last bit up. Joking. Well, what's the alternative, Shell? Would you want me to tell the truth? So that we messed up because we were otherwise engaged. Okay, so... Well, just say that we were watching the monitors and we hadn't realised that the tape had finished. Yeah, but then how do but we... But, let me finish. You managed to get it transcribed live, so anyway... Well, so what do I put? I don't know. Use your initiative. <sighs> All right, Irene was talking about David's brother, Carl. Yeah. And Carl's a priest. So just put down... Irene contacted Carl and that he said he prayed for him. Really? That David was in his prayers, just put it down. Okay. Yes, Gary. Yeah, I'm outside Irene Radford's now. She just got home. The bloke driving is called Danny Opus. Do you know him? Yeah, I thought he was in the nick. Well yeah, so did I, but well it looks like Irene's briefing him. What's he doing hanging around with her? Hang on, he's driving off. Look, Irene's gone back into the house. Something's going down here. Do you want me to check it with Inspector Gold? No, no. You follow him, see what he's up to. Sarge. You didn't have to come back so soon, you know. No, I know. You know, everyone knows what a terrible time you've been having. No one expected you back this early. Well, I'm better when I've got something to focus on. Well... If you want to go out, you know, get a drink, have a chat. To be honest, Gina, I wouldn't know where to start. You know, my daughter has decided she'd rather stay with the man who kidnapped her than be with me. It's not exactly a subject most people can relate to, is it? No, we should go out for a drink. Do you want to be honest? Patricia Gaunt, DS Nixon and Inspector Gold, Sun Hill. If you're looking for Jack, I've no idea where he is. Do you mind if we come in? What do you think I'm going to tell you? I don't know where he is and I don't know what he's up to, all right? Well, how's he been since his nephew died? We hear that he and Jimmy were really close. Oi! I imagine that Jack would really like to see justice done. As to what you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Charlie. I've got something for you as you're here. Oh, you've given me plenty, thanks. I mean, other intelligence. Mobile phones, drugs. Yeah, another time, eh? And rumours of a breakout? Got specifics? No. Yeah, well, prison won't be prison if there weren't rumours of breakouts, OK, would it? Listen, I've been thinking. Maybe it would be fun to meet up. Yeah, I'll give you a call. I haven't exactly got Jack on a tight leash. We spent the best part of our marriage apart. While he was in Nick? Yeah, 20 years for a job the Radfords got away with. Jack didn't deserve the sentence he got. Got quite a few old scores to settle then. He's not that stupid. No? Well, if he's trying to take matters into his own hands, he's going to end up in big trouble. He's straight. He's staying clean. Really? Is that why he's making contact with all his old mates? His old criminal mates? I don't need this. I really don't. If he's planning on going head to head with the Radfords... Where are you getting your information from? He's going to end up in a shallow grave. It happened to his nephew and it will happen to him. Jack is the only one that can put Irene away legitimately. Please, let me get to him before she does. Jack's no grass. It's about self-preservation, Patricia. His way will end up back inside, or six feet under. 
He can only get his revenge if he makes a statement about Irene being involved in Brian Thatcher's murder. He put Irene away. And Jack gets to see another day. I want you out. He can't do this on his own. Get out. And you know where to find us, all right? So how bad is David? Well, look for yourself. Completely lost the plot. They don't do prison very well, do they, these Radfords? Must be hard on Irene. You know, our bleeds for her. Uh, sorry, what's happened? Oh, look, it's, it's my fault. He take her out. You what? But it's okay, look, I've got the prison liaison officer to transcribe it all down live. She tells David that Carl is praying for him. Mm -hmm. She said that. Yeah, yeah. just that. Carl's always told me that he doesn't talk to his mother anymore. Oh, he knows what else he hasn't told you. Right. Can I have a little chat with him? Anyone wants to spend on my mobile? Well done again. No. Got to lock up. Oh, that's very impressive. Yeah, so impressive that some people seem to want it for themselves. Carl, why has your mother come back? I didn't know she'd gone away. We don't keep in touch anymore. That's not what I hear. You check your sources. They're obviously not reliable. You spoke to her the day your brother shot DC Thatcher, didn't you? There's a distinction between being part of the Radfords and warning my mother that some police officer's out to murder her. Isn't that? Yeah, of course. Still, you care enough to want to protect her. She's my mother. But what is she up to? You're wasting your time here, Inspector. She's looking in a pretty poor state to me, not just physically, but mentally as well. I've never seen her look so fragile. And your brother David? He's not too good either. I don't see them anymore. So, why are you praying for him? I don't know what you're talking about. Your mother is back in London. There are people around with scores to settle. This time, Irene might not be up to it. And that's your main concern? My mother's well-being? She's terminally ill. She's got cancer. Who told you that? She did. And do you believe her? Maybe she is telling the truth, but something like this, David would have contacted me. But he's in prison. Ways and means. We have an arrangement. He would have made sure I knew. Check your sources, Inspector. I'd be happier if I would clap eyes on Jack Gould. That's the first time I've heard anybody say that. 
Well, not exactly a feast for the eyes, is old Jack. How about Carl? Knows his mother inside out, I reckon. Sorry, Carl. There's someone in the front office for you. Tricia? She said you'd know who she was. Maybe Carl's right. Sometimes our prayers are answered. Don't feel comfortable being here. I feel like I'm letting him down. Look, I know this isn't easy, but let's be straight with one another. I'm worried about your husband, and so are you. It's written all over your face. He's been missing a week. Is it out of the ordinary? Well, we haven't really done ordinary. Jack come out of prison and then his nephew was murdered. We well, didn't exactly settle down to a routine. Have you got any idea where he is? He called me last night. We were supposed to speak this morning. And? No answer. Mobile? No. There's a phone in the house. It's his bolt hole. Word was that Irene was looking for him. We decided to stay low for a while. It's all right. You're doing absolutely the right thing. Do you have an address? Right, so Danny Opus picked up Irene from the prison after she visited David, yeah? Yeah, and he took her home. Well, he's pun life. Way down the Radford's pecking order. I mean, if she's depending on him as a right-hand man, that's a definite indication of how desperate she is. Well, maybe he's risen through the ranks. There we go. Done for possession for three years, supplying Class A, and he's currently out on licence. Well, this bloke is Imran Oruk. Ensis has been keeping tabs on him. What, well, you been on to Ensis? Tell you what, mate, I wouldn't mind working for them. They've got those plasma TV screens, brand new kit, huge Christmas tree in the foil. Gary, just curb your enthusiasm, yeah? Well, Oruk is thought to be behind a million pound theft of mobile phones from this warehouse in Germany, yeah? Though the German police could never prove his involvement. Right, so have Ensis got anything else on him? Well, on the surface, the bloke's legit. He runs a textiles firm in Turkey. So what, he's over here doing business? Well, he's been working for an agency under a false name, yeah? But he's just got himself a job working part-time for a haulage company. Now, why would a successful businessman do that? Because the company that Orak works for owns a massive freight yard in Woolwich. So he's planning another job? Exactly. And who's in it with him? Danny Opus. And who does Danny work for? Irene Radford. I'm looking forward to becoming an FLO. It's a big challenge. In a year or so, I'm out of this and into a special squad. There's me, thinking you're in it for the male totty. I don't know what you mean, Mum. Steve Hendry's what I mean. Here we go. Amber, go and check round the back. Come. Police! Hello! I thought you said this Jack Gaunt was some big time gangster. He is. Well, he was. Oh, is he living in a dump like this for? Oh, because he's running scared. Go and check the room next door. If it's Irene that's got to Jack Gaunt, what's she done with him? So what about the cancer? Oh, I don't know. She might be on the level, she might not. She's clever. You know, she's presenting herself as a victim. You know, poor old Irene, come home to die. And all the while, she's ending some other poor blokes in his. Look, we need to trace Jack Gaunt. That's if he's still alive. I want Irene picking up. No, no, no. Look, Gary's come up with something that Irene's involved with. This could be pretty big. What, bigger than this? I know you want to move on it. No, no, no. We're talking about murder here, Philip. Yeah, but if we pick her up too soon, we're going to blow it. Oh. So, 
Sam, mm -hmm. I need you to drop whatever it is you're doing and start trying to locate Jack Cummins. I'm already on to it, Gina. I've got officers speaking to people near the safe house. So far, no one's heard or seen anything. Oh, surprise, surprise. You really think he's still alive? Well, if Irene Radford's got anything to do with it, who knows? Mm. Right, what's this about, then? Crowder's Industrial Estate, Woolwich. And this is where Iman Oryx now working for a firm called Hammonds. And? No, like this is good. The Hammonds deal mainly with food and storage distribution, yeah? Fruit and veg. Oh, so what are we talking about here? The great turnip robbery? Well, the thing is, because it's just food, Hammond security. It's not as tight as other warehouse facilities. And these are not the actual Hammonds warehouses, are they? Well, no, ma'am. It's just to illustrate the point. You know, so it lodges in people's minds. Well, recently, Hammonds have done a deal with these people, Tenzo, makers of electrical equipment. The Hammonds are going to store, receive and distribute these goods from the Woolwich base. And they haven't adjusted their security yet? No, and they're not going to either until two months' time. Which makes them a soft target. Yeah, but do we have any intelligence that suggests that Irene Radford is in on this? Yeah, well, Danny Opus. He's been running between Irene and Iraq all day. We've heard two signs out of the way Irene's businesses are looking on pretty shaky ground. And you wanted to know why she's come back? Well, probably to pull off one last job. Where's the first consignment coming in? I don't know, but I can check. Just give us a couple of hours. Let me pull in Danny. Oh, do leave off. Danny's not going to say any words against the Radfords. His life wouldn't be worth living. At least let me have a go. What are we going to achieve by pulling in Irene? She's not going to tell you what she's done with Jack Gaunt. And we're waiting for forensics to clear the safe house anyway. All right, just one hour. Please. All right. You make sure you report to me the minute you've got any details, all right? Sir. Hi. I heard you were back. Yeah. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. Come on, Sarge. Look, I'll speak to you a bit later, yeah? So what we're gonna do, wait all day? You ain't gonna show. Oh yeah, I forgot to say some woman phone for you. Michelle, prison liaison's officer. Well, if she calls again, just tell her that I'm not around, yeah? Oh, right. After you for maintenance, is she? Eh? Here he is. Wait, oh, you stay put. Why? Because I said so. Gary, don't sulk. It's not a good look. Remember me? Sit down. You'll do better now. So, you're Iron Radford's loyal little foot soldier now. What's happened to the rest of our team? And she moved in with the Turks. Yeah, we pretty much know everything. Just need a few little details. You're not gonna nick me? Well, that depends. You've been a silly man, Danny. You're out on license. They've given you another chance, and look at you. You're in the Radford's back pocket. I haven't done anything wrong. Oh, yeah? My mother and sister are with me now. It's a new lease of life for them. I can't go back inside. So, tell me about Imran Orak. He's on a job with Irene, right? Come and think about it. If they go down, so do you, and you do a longer stretch. Then we can sort this out and talk to me. OK. We'll do the shore then, shall we? No, wait. I want out of this. My sister can't support my mother alone. She's not well. They need me. There's a ride, right? Where? You leave me out of this, yeah? Freight yard. Seacold Road. When? This afternoon. Around three o'clock. Good boy. Who the hell called them? Yes, yeah, someone. You really should have contacted us once you established a link between Irene and Radford and the Iman Oric. I'm not convinced that we have. Mum, look, Danny Opus, he's the link. 
Inspector Gold, B.S. Hodges. I told you to refer things to me. Yeah, I know the time's running on. I thought you'd want to move on this. We've been gathering intelligence on Imran Auric for the past three months, actually. You did a good job. Auric and his associates are a very tight circle. Notoriously difficult to infiltrate. Really? So why did Phil manage it so easily? Well, because I was at an advantage. I know the guy. I found a weak link in the chain. Is Irene Radford really going to rely or confide in this prat Danny Opus? Whether this has anything to do with the Radfords or not, we've got to run with it. Now, I wanted to give you the opportunity to follow it through with us. But if you'd prefer, we'll happily deal with it ourselves. Mum, can I? It's good information. We can't just run away from it now. Philip, read my lips. I am not convinced. All right, what are you going to do if Flying Squad arrest Irene Radford? What, we put in all the work and they run away with the result? This is not a competition. Isn't it? All right. All right, let's go with it. We need uniform support. I suspect it's not going to be obstructive, is she? No. You get it all the time, some bitter old duty officer threatened by the new blood. Filthy, mate. That's out of order. What? She's got her own private agenda, hasn't she? No. She just wants Iron Rapper banged up like the rest of us. Yeah, I think I know what I saw. I think you saw wrong, all right. All right? Yeah, whatever you say. You don't come into somebody else's nick and slag off their boss. You're too right. It's basic manners. Oh, Phil, you wanted this delivery. Hi, Abby. It's me. Mum. I just wanted you to know I'm thinking about you. And I'm going to really miss spending Christmas together this year. But, um, if you need me, I'm here. So, um, give us a call. Okay. Hello? No, uh, dear Santa isn't around. You're all set. Inspector Gold's on the way. Yep. Just waiting on one of the probationers. Amber. Why is that girl on? Hey, she's a good laugh, Amber. I thought you'd like her. Two peas in a pod, you. I don't think so, darling. She certainly managed to fill your shoes with Steve Hunter while she was away. Gary? Where the hell have you been? We're meant to be on an urgent call. Ooh, sorry. What did I do? It's all right. You're moving out, are you? That's fine. It's going straight in the back of my boots. Thank you, Santa's little helper. Look at that. Oh. Limited edition. <laughs> yeah. See, I promised Madison I'd get it for her. Wow. Let's see. So she's spending the holidays with you, is she? Yeah. Who you got coming around yours? Uh, no one. No, I'm sorry, I forgot. No, no, I'm, I'm fine. She's going to love that. Sam. Sam. I'm fine, Phil, really. Look, I'm sorry. I got so preoccupied with Maddie's bite that I forgot what you're going through. I should have thought. I was spending Christmas with you. You are kidding me. No. I know. I know he abducts her and leaves her to die and she'd still rather have Christmas with him than with me. You talking to her? No. It's getting worse. Hugh took Abby to get at me, didn't he, to teach me a lesson to hurt me. So why is he doing this? Surely he's made his point. I accept I haven't been a great mum, you know, and I really don't know where things went so wrong. Sam. It's not your fault, right? You can't think like that. 
I've made an effort with Christmas. I bought a tree and I've decorated the house and got presents for Abby, just in case. One thing I realised, though, during my time off is that I have to get on with this. Abby knows where I am. All I can do is wait and hope. But you can't spend New Year's on your own. It's not right. I bought loads of food. Why don't you come round mine? Maddie's going to be there. She'd love it if you joined us. Yeah, so would I. Listen, you better get a move on. Gina Gold's in a bad enough mood as it is. No pressure. And whatever you need, you just let me know, okay? Mom. How are we doing? I've got an arms unit at the back of the building. Four of my officers up there, four inside the warehouse. Did Danny Opus give you any indication how many people would be involved in the robbery? No, but he reckons it's going to be big. What about Irene Radford? Did you say whether she'd be directly involved? No. I've known Irene for years. Been to her house dozens of times. Never once have I seen a dog. Never once heard her mention a dog. Mom? Two unmarked transit vans with dodgy plates have just pulled into the industrial estate. Okay. Stand by. Hold your positions till you're told to move. Received. So you're friends with Steve Hunter then? Who? Mm -hmm. He's a funny bloke, Steve. Do you reckon? Seems like a regular guy to me. Guess I know him a little bit better than you. What I mean to say is he's quite shy. <laughs> shy? Steve Hunter? Joking, aren't you? Here we go, get into first positions. Received. <sighs> it's only really one problem I've got with Steve. Oh, yeah, what's that? I'm really bad in bed. Dear Sanders, yeah. I'm DS Nixon. Unfortunately, Phil Hunter's not available. Can I help? Well, I actually wanted to speak to him personally. Can't reach him. I've left messages, but he's not returning my calls. Oh. He's interested in David Radford. That's right. Wanted to know if anything came up. Well, it has. I'm going to pass this on sooner, but I've only just found out myself. Well, that's okay. Do you want to come through? Thank you. Right, we're on. Stinks, Phil. It stinks. Why the road's gone down? Irene Radford wouldn't waste her time on a job like this. She sold us a story. Think about it. The dog she never owned, the cancer she's never had, and now this. The robbery with nothing to pinch. I don't get what you're saying. Just face it. You have been had. You and Tonto both. Yeah. Yeah, Phil, I've got a friend of yours here, a DS Saunders. She's been trying to contact you. She's got some info from Longmarsh on David Radford. Yeah. Really? Okay, thanks. David Radford's being moved from Longmarsh to a secure unit. Right. Today. Now. She's put this together. Made us think she was doing one last job. So she's going to spring, David. It's the 
breakout. What are you talking about breakout? Prison liaison officer mentioned that there were rumours of a breakout. You're having a laugh, aren't you? Tell me you are having a laugh. Yeah, you need to tell security to put Arnold on the transport to the East London Psychiatric Hospital. Get the transfer to the secure unit. What? The van transporting David Radford left ten minutes ago. Yeah, hello. So why did no one call me? Mom, it's gone. It's already on its way. Well, can they give us the route the van's going to take? We need to trace it. Mom. Okay, it looks as though it's just busy A roads all the way up until you get to about within a mile of the hospital. Is there any way we can communicate with the prison van? Come on. Can we talk to the van? Yeah, there's a radio link up to the prison. But not from here. There's no way we can link up with it. No, but prison staff have only just spoken to the driver, haven't they? Everything's fine. No, we can't. Right, and where are they now? Fifteen miles from the secure 15 unit. Fifteen miles from the secure unit. All right, well, someone should tell the driver of the van is about to be joined by every armed unit from the home counties, all right? Sarge. One second, Mom. Yeah. Five IRVs have checked the route within 15 miles east of the secure unit, right? Mm -hmm. But not one of them seen a prison van. The prison haven't been able to make contact with the van for the past few minutes. Did you get that, Mom? Sam, we need a list of personnel on that van. How many people and who they are. Mom. Right. Now we're here about 15 miles from the secure unit. They could have done a detour away before here. Sierra Oscar 1 to Sierra Oscar. We request a helicopter unit. Sierra Oscar 1 from Sierra Oscar. Can you give your precise location? So what's the connection with Carl Bradford? What? Well, it's just at the prison. Irene's talking about Carl. If he's involved, we need to speak to him. Thanks, Michelle. OK, according to Longmarsh, there were four other prisoners in the van and three personnel, as well as David Radford. Right, Colin Joyce is a prison officer, Derek Ellis, the psychiatric nurse, and a driver, Carl Strong. The prison van driver is called Carl. You sure? You are absolutely sure? Thank you very much. Now, you know what I'm thinking here, Philip, don't you? What you told me earlier about the tape running out and the transcript and how she got it down all live. Your prison liaison officer. How it didn't matter about the tape running out. Look, when Irene mentioned the name Carl, I just assumed that... You assumed? How much attention were you paying? Look, I know, Michelle, we will work together. We just got talking and... What, you and a young woman in a room just talking? I thought I told you to give this your full attention. I know. The Radfords have got someone in the inside. The bloody van driver is another Carl, and you missed Sierra it. Sierra Oscar 1 from Sierra Oscar, India 3, has spotted the prison van. It's heading west along the B786 to Yellen. Sierra Oscar 1 to Sierra Oscar. We are approximately two miles from Yellen village, approaching on the B786. <laughs> We've got to wait for backup. No, no, no. It's all going off here. It's all going off. Oh. 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 It's all right, mate. We've got more. Just hang on. <coughs> David. David's OK. You remember me? Phil, we've got David Redford. Come on. I'm going to take my son now, and you're going to let me. You stay where you are. Behave yourself. You'll be fine. <coughs> Just do as I say. David, get up. Come on, this is all for you. Get up! Help him, help him up. Come on, come on. Look, Irene, he's ill, he's ill! Christ, it's David. David! Son. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm going to have to leave you, son. So, looks like it's just you and me now. Stay back. Do as she says, Phil. Do as she says. Stay there. Don't you, the don't you let me down again. Phil, don't you let me down this time. in the car.
all the bills. No helicopters, no roadblocks, no nothing, or I'll blow her head off. What's this about? Well, we were just doing a bit of business earlier. A highly unsatisfactory bit of business, I should point out. One more word about turning myself in and I will kill you. I don't believe that.